Hello and welcome to the first part of this tutorial series. Today I'm going to be introducing Flutter to you and how to set it up in our first little introduction. So what is Flutter? So it's made by Google, which is quite awesome. And it's something like React Native, which means that you have one code base for multiple devices and also web development is coming soon, hopefully. It basically just uses one language, which is Dart, also developed by Google. And how it works, it just translates Flutter to a lower level language, which then will work on each of these given devices, so Android or iOS, the same way. And also there's some kind of beta version for the web. So how do you get started? So just go to the website and on the top right you have the get started button. And it's as simple as this, just clicking on here and then selecting your platform. So let's say for example Windows. And then you just go through the documentation. So download the zip file, update your path and whatsoever, what so on. So that's all you need to do. Just follow these steps and everything should work. The documentation for Flutter is very well done by Google. If you have a different operating system like Linux or Mac OS, you just click on that and then a guide opens so you can install it on your operating system. I'm going to be using an Android device for demonstration just because I don't really have a Mac, but it should work the exact same way on a Mac as well. The only difference is that you do not want to use Android Studio for development and testing. You want to be using, uh, I think, Xcode, some kind of Xcode component. But for me, it's going to be Android Studio, so you just can download it for your device again. For me, it is a Linux operating system. I'm using Zorin OS. But for you, it can be Windows again and just again, just download it and install it and you should be good to go. With that out of the way, let's go to our folder where we want to create a Flutter project. And to create a Flutter app, you just want to type in Flutter, create, and let's create something like a Flutter Tetris app and hit enter. Flutter is going to create lots of files for you. And once it's all done, I can go just change directory like to the Flutter Tetris app. And in here, I can just type in Flutter Run. But before I do that, I either have to connect my device to it. So a Android phone or iOS phone, or you can start your virtual device. So I'm just going to quickly do that by starting my Android Studio. If you successfully installed Android Studio, you should have something like this after starting it up. Now you can just open the configure button at the top right and go to AVD manager. And a window is going to pop up with the devices that you have installed. I only have one device with the latest Android 10 version from Google and you can just hit the play button right here and it's going to start up the virtual device for you. Once that is started up you can just close this and close this. For the editor I'm going to use Visual Studio Code which is honestly not just a editor it's really a tool that you can use to its fullest potential. It's open source it's free and I don't see a reason why you should not download it but if you're a hardcore Vim fan or Vi fan then good for you but I'm going to use Visual Studio Code so you can just download it from its website and I'm going to link these three websites in the description box down below. Let's go back to the terminal and in the Flutter Tetris app if I is hit ls I have a couple of folders the Android folder the iOS folder and then the lib folder and I want to go to the lib folder and once I am in here I have a file that's called main.dart. This file has been prepared by Flutter and to open the whole folder you can just go code and write a dot in Linux and Mac OS. So I'm just going to do that and Visual Studio is going to open up for me. You might have a welcome screen doesn't matter but we want to open up the main.dart file which is just a lot of stuff that we're going to delete but we can still look at what this does. A good thing in Visual Studio Code is that if I hit Control J a terminal pops up at the bottom. You should already be in the folder but if you're not just change up to the folder that we are developing in and if I hit ls I have the main.dart file but to be able to run Flutter I have to change the directory one back so in here and if I hit ls I should have the Android, iOS and lib folders in here also some test and readme folders and in here in this folder I can just type in Flutter and run hit enter and this is going to take up a while but be sure to have a Android virtual device open or a iOS virtual device or just your phone connected to the PC. If you don't have that, uh, you will get an error describing that you should connect some kind of device. The first time you start Flutter, it might take up a while, so I'll see you once it starts. While we're waiting, we can go through a couple of things that I'm using in Visual Studio. So if I go to the extensions tab on the left right here, you can see lots of extensions that I have installed. We're not going to need most of them for this right here, but be sure to install the Dart extension and also install the Flutter extension. So just go in here and type Dart and it's going to look up the Dart extension and then you can just click install where I have uninstall and you also want to install Flutter. Again, type in Flutter, hit the Flutter and then click install. Okay, once the app starts, you should have something like this, a button and just a Flutter demo homepage. And if I click the button, 
it increases by one. Okay, this is the Flutter demo. If you get this working, you are set. And for Flutter in the terminal, you can hit R to restart this. So this is just a hot reload. It does not change anything. So the states are the same. So if I control F and find you have pushed this button, if I change this text to something like hello world, save it and then hit R. I'm going to have the text hello world written in here and 11. And if I hit shift R, I'm going to perform a full restart and this is going to reset the state. So I have zero in here and the hello world is still the same and I can hit the plus button a couple of times to then set it up again. Okay, that's it for this setup. So this is how we are going to work. But now let's delete all of this that's written in here by Flutter and let's write our own app. So in the main.dart, we want to import a package. So this is something like C sharp or C or C++. You want to be importing packages and the package is going to be Flutter slash material. This is something you want to import in every single file if you are using something that's related to Flutter. And then you also need a main function just like in C++ and C. This is just going to be a shortened main function, something similar to JavaScript syntax. So just run app. And in here we want to pass in some kind of my app widget like this. Let's create a class that's called my app. So class my app. And we have to extend this app. This is something like inheritance from the stateless widget. And now we still get an error in here because we have to overwrite the build function. This is something like a virtual void in C sharp. So we have to make a widget and build function, which takes in a build context and let's call this the context. Now we are almost free of errors. So let's just return a material app. And this is this app is going to have a title and the title is going to be, let's say Tetris. And then we also want some kind of home, which is going to be the main side of the app. And in here we want to pass in a widget as well. So let's type in some kind of home widget. And we also have to again create it. And after return, let's put in a semicolon. Let's also, while we edit, create a new class. Let's call this home. And this will again extend from the stateless widget class. And you're going to be using the stateless widget class quite often. And again, we have to override the build functions. So let's make a build context and call this the context. And in here, just type in with me, we want to return a widget and we have some kind of scaffold as a widget available. So scaffold and open up parentheses. And in here, it wants a app bar for the app bar. It takes in a widget. So let's make a app bar widget in the app bar slot or argument basically. And the app bar wants a title. Let's make the title a text widget and just put in Tetris and also a semicolon after the return. And now we have no errors, which is quite all right. And to format it in Visual Studio Code, if you have the Dart extensions installed, you can hit Control or Curl, Shift and I. And it's going to format it perfectly with these comments, which are quite useful because we are going to be layering lots of UI elements under each other. So if you get the scaffold and app bar comments right here, we know where each of these widgets is ending, which is going to be really, really useful. And for the title of the app bar, let's also make some kind of center title. So it's in the center and set this to true. After every single argument or widget, you want to be using a comma because if I delete this, it's going to put it online, which does not look very good. So if I put a comma in here, then hit control shift I or curl shift I, it's going to format it nicely. So let's keep doing that as a good practice. Okay, this is good. So what are we doing in here? We have a main function, which is calling a function. This is, this is a Dart function or a Flutter function, I should be more specific, which is going to run our app. And we are passing in the my app widget, which extends from stateless widget. There's just some kind of UI element. And if I hover over the stateless widget, you can read a description. It basically means it is just some kind of static thing with no real state. It's just a static button that does the same thing every single time you click it, but that's good. We want to use that for now. And if we extend something from a stateless widget, we have to implement the build function, which returns a widget. That's basically the thing, the UI element that we display. And in here, we are returning a material app with a title of Tetris and a home of home. This is again a widget that we created. And if I go down here, we have again a stateless widget in here in which we have a build function. This is just going to be a routine. You're going to get used to it throughout this project. We are going to basically use it in every single class. And in here we return a scaffold, which is basically this combination, the blue top right here with the white body. So for the app bar, that's the top right here. We have a text for the title which takes again a widget. Everything takes a widget in here. For the widget, we are putting in a text with Tetris and then we're putting it in the centers. And now if I make a full restart, which is a shift and R, we are going to have a blank screen. This is the body. 
and the Tetris right here. This is the title of the app. So this text is up here. Then we have a empty body. So let's make this body look better. So in the scaffold, we can also declare a app body. So just make a body like this. And this also takes in a widget right here. As you can see, if I hover over it, it wants a widget. So let's make a new class and call this the menu. And Dart is set up a way that it wants you to create for every single class a new file. And now it does not have any optimizations, I think, but they should be coming any patches now soon. The more classes you have, the better and put one class in one file always. So let's right click in here under the menu.dart and create a new file and call this the menu.dart. And in here we again want to import a package. We want to import the flutter slash material.dart so that we can use UI elements and for the menu we want to make a class that has a state because we are going to be figuring out some kind of details about the player later on. So let's make a class menu and extends from the stateful widget this time and if I hover over the menu with the stateful widget it says missing concrete implementation of create state. So let's make a function that is called create state just like we did in the main.dart we had to implement the build function and in here we just have to implement the state create state function. So let's make a state pass in the stateful widget, call this the create state and let's use some kind of JavaScript language again and let's make a menu state function in here and this is not going to be a function, this is going to be actually be a class and be sure to type in the underscore in here because every single function or class actually that has the underscore in here is going to be a private class for this file. So now let's copy the menu state with the underscore and let's create a class. So class menu state and extends the state and in here we want to type in the menu. So this extends the state of the menu and if I hover over this we have to implement the build function. So widget and build and build context and just context like we did before and in here we want to return a widget. So let's try and return a widget. So a simple widget let's make just a simple play button. To do that we just want to be returning a raised button. We want a on press function in here. And we can use again some kind of anonymous function. So just put in parentheses. In this function, we just want to print out that we pressed play. So print and pressed play. And we also have to put in semicolons. And after the return, let's hit a semicolon as well. And now if I hit Control Shift I, it's going to format out this function. Okay, now we have a raised button and on press event, but we also want to give the button some kind of color. So put in color and for the color property, we can use colors that are pre-made and in here we can just select any kind of color, but I'm going to do a red and we can also select some kind of icon. So let's go in here and put in child. This is going to be the icon that is, that is displayed and the child takes in a widget. Let's put in a widget and let's select a icon, not a text this time. And again, Flutter has some kind of pre-made icon so just put in icons dot and you have lots of icons and they are going to be showing you the icons on the right right here and I am going to use the play and arrow like this and if I hover over it I see the play arrow right here and if I hover over colors I can see some kind of palette and again do not forget to put a comma in here because then if we format it it's going to look way better and now before we restart the app we have to go to the main.dart and in here I see some red with the menu and to fix that, I just have to import the menu.dart, just like C++, C Sharp or C basically. If I have a different file, I want to import it to, so I can use it. Now we have no errors and we can try to start it. So just hit Shift and R to make a full restart. And we have a play button on the top left. Awesome. And if I click it, it's going to say press play in the terminal. Awesome. I can click it as many times as I want. And we also will be hearing some kind of sound by default. But this does not look good at all. So let's try to position this button at the center of the screen. And to do that, we are going to wrap the whole raised button right here into another class. This is just something like, for example, HTML and divs or any kind of tags. You're wrapping multiple tags into each other. The exception of Flutter is that the widgets at the bottom level are being called just like a function, basically, with parentheses and parameters, which you can specify with the on press and color and child and so on. For each widget, which is basically some kind of function call, you have different parameters which you can use. So let's wrap this button into some kind of widget. Let's make a column widget because we are going to have more buttons under each other so let's make a column and in the column we can actually center it so main axis alignment and in here we can choose the 
main axis alignment dot center. And for the next parameter, we can choose some kind of child. And this is going to take in a array of widgets that we can pass in. So in here, just cut out the raised button, just like this. Control X and paste it in here. And now this is going to be a mess because we lost the parentheses to the column. So let's just down here where we have the semicolon, just add one parenthesis and then your file should not be read anymore in the hierarchy right here, here in Visual Studio Code. And if I hit Control Shift I, it should format nicely. You can always format when you have no errors. And right here we have a column layout with one widget, which is a raised button. And now if I hit Shift R to restart it, the button is going to shift in the middle because we have exactly one column and we are centering it on the axis. So we divide this body into one column and put in one button. So now let's try and duplicate this button, okay? So just control D and the raised button, just put a comma after it and paste in another button. We can do that because the column takes a widget and we do not have to declare how many columns we want. We can just paste in as many raised buttons as we want. And let's print something like pressed play two and for the icon, let's make a different play icon. So play, and instead of the play arrow, we can put in a play circle outline, for example. Save it, hit Control Shift I to format it, and then Shift R to restart it. Now we have two buttons under each other, but they are still not centered, which does not look good at all. So let's change that. And to do that, we want to wrap the column into another class, which is going to be a container. And the container, takes in a alignment and the alignment is going to be alignment dot center and also a child which is going to be the column layout so copy the whole column layout uh, where does it end right here without the semicolon and paste it in the child right here and now if i hit Control shift i it's going to format it right here down at the bottom where you have backslash backslash column backslash backslash container you want to put in a comma again so that we can hit control shift i and we have a better formatted file now save it restart it again and now the buttons should be in the center and now if i hit the first button with the play arrow it's going to say pressed play and now if i hit the second button with the play circle outline it's going to say pressed play too awesome now we have two buttons which trigger different functions and this is going to be it for the first part of this tutorial series this is just a brief introduction to flutter and how to get it started set up and some kind of basic outlines be sure to subscribe to the channel so that you are the first one to see the next part of this tutorial series like the video comment down below what i should and should not do with the tetris app some kind of original ideas and i'll see you in the next one bye